So you want to learn how to upload external designs, things that you found on other websites to Cricut Design Space? That's what we're doing today. So over the past couple of weeks, we've talked a lot about print then cut. We have gone from A to Z, how to use print then cut in Cricut Design Space, and we've even gone over eight different ways that you can correct any print then cut issues that you might have, whether it be with your machine, with your printer, or with your materials. But today, today we're gonna to take it one step further and we are going to upload external designs, things that are not in Cricut Design Space, to Cricut Design Space, and we are going to use those in our projects. So number one, what kind of file type do you need? Number two, how do you get it from your computer into Cricut Design Space? And number three, once it's in Cricut Design Space, how do you personalize it? How do you make it a little bit more your own? And to help this process, I've designed a printable for us to use in the process today so you can go through this with me and then you can download this design and try it for yourself. And finally, I'm going to share with you my favorite websites to go out and get external designs and bring those into Cricut Design Space. Okay, if you're new here, you are crafting with Kim Byers. Let's hop into it. Okay, so number one, file type. So Cricut will accept seven different file types to be uploaded into it. I'll be honest with you, I only ever use three. There's the JPEG, the SVG, and the PNG. And so for today, we're gonna to talk specifically about PNG and SVG. So SVG is a scalable vector graphic. And so honestly, SVG is pretty much good for everything in my opinion. <laughs> because the SVG is something that can be scaled as large or as small as you want it to be and it won't lose resolution. It's a layered file, but it is going to automatically cut. So if you use an SVG, you're going to have to flatten um, all of those layers into one print then cut file. But what we're going to upload today is a PNG, which is a portable network graphic. And so this PNG is able to be very high resolution. It's already flat, so you're going to be able to just pull that in. Now, again, I'm gonna to talk to you about personalization, so you're going to take the layers that you add to it and make that part of that PNG. But if you wanted to, you could just print then cut the PNG just as it is. Okay, so secondly, now that we know what type of file we're dealing with, let's go ahead and pop into Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how to upload this to your canvas. Okay, so let's start out with the design that I'm giving to you guys. So typically when I do these printables, I will make them ready for scissors so that you can just cut them out by hand if you want. But of course, what we're doing today is cutting them out with our Cricut. So I have this really cute, thank you for making me sharp, little pencil um, for, it's good for a gift card holder. And so that's what I'm giving you. So this is what it looks like if you were printing it out and cutting it with a pair of scissors. And then this is what it would look like, or this is what it looks like for what we are doing. Now I am going to make it roughly I think four by five and a half. I think that's the size that we're going to use today for this project. But I just made it as big as the sheet because you can scale it up and down once it's in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. So what you'll want to do is start with a blank canvas. Now you see on mine, I've gone ahead and set everything up for us so that we can talk through it quickly. But the very first thing you wanna do is open a blank canvas. And then from there, what we want to do is upload our design. So once you get that design from me or wherever you get your graphics from, you will download it to your computer and then you will upload it to Cricut Design Space. So over here in the left-hand navigation, we'll want to select Upload. And so then here you see an image and a pattern fill. What you wanna do is image and so upload. And then we will browse our computer and pull that in. Okay, so I have that, we'll pull that in. And so now it's showing me the upload image. This is what it looks like. You see that there's no background behind it and that's because I removed it before I provided it to you. And so when you look over into selecting that image type, we're going to choose moderately complex. Um, the complex would be if there was a pattern behind it. So now that we've chosen that, we'll hit continue. Okay, and so now you can see that there's no background behind it. Now, if you purchased something and needed to remove a background, Cricut does offer that option if you have Cricut Access. It may be available to anyone, but I think it's Cricut Access only. And so what you will do then is you would be able to erase anything if there were things behind it. And again, this one's a clean image. So let's go ahead and apply and continue. 
So now it brings you to a page and it says, do you want a cut image, which would literally just be the outline of the image, or do you want to use print then cut image? And so you can see that's the one that we want to use. So we will select that. You can rename it um, and then maybe enter a tag. And so I'm just going to make a tag of teacher. I'll put that in my back to school folder and then we will upload. And so now what we will do is we will click that one and my upload and add to canvas buttons are just off of the screen. Let's see if I can, I can't, they're there. I swear they're right at the very bottom of the screen. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to show <laughs> on here for you, but just trust that it's right below there and it says cancel or add to canvas. And so we're going to add to canvas. Okay, so for number three, what we want to do is personalize this card. This card is adorable, but it's Cricut. Let's take it one step further and personalize this. So over to the right, I just added some text. So I just used the text function here. Here we go right here. And it chose a text. And actually this is um, a chalkboard handwritten chalkboard. So if you want to use the same one when you create yours, but all I did was I wrote out her name and then I took that name and I was able to resize it down to fit onto the actual card. So I just made it to where it would fit right there in that center. And then I grabbed a little heart and my name and I pulled those over and resized them. So it's as if I'm signing the card. Got it a little off. And so now once I have all of these items, what I can do is I can just drag over the entire design and I can go up and make all of this print then cut. And so when I do that, if you look over into the navigation, you see now they all say print then cut, but that doesn't mean that they're all attached. So you want to make sure that you go down and you select flatten. And so now that we've hit flatten, you can see now they're all one item. Four items are not highlighted in the, in the right hand navigation. Only one item is. Okay. So now that we have that the correct size, now we can go ahead and we can hide all these other items and then we can um, go with the, the video that I did for you last week, A to Z, but basically you're going to send it over to your mat and you are going to print that out. Now in last week's video, I do go very detailed about printer settings and how to get the best possible color and all that kind of thing. So if you've not done print and cut before, you might want to check that out. But today we were really just talking about how to get that into the system and how to get it personalized. This is an easy design. You can see it pops right out beautifully. And then all you have to do is add your favorite gift card and you are ready for teacher appreciation week. Now I did not forget. So if you are looking for darling designs for whatever the occasion may be, whether that's SVGs and cut files or printable files like we did today, there are three different places that I typically go. So Creative Fabrica, beautiful, fun stuff, thousands of fonts and designs. There's also design bundles. I, I tend to feel like they're a little trendier. Um, they have some really cute, fun things. And then Etsy. Etsy has some great stuff from creatives who are selling um, the things that they're creating and then they're creating for their business. So make sure you check out all of those. And by the way, if you didn't know, I also have an Etsy shop and I would love for you to pop in and check that out as well. I'll put all those links down below for you and I will see you in the next one.